Welcome to the Dynamic Radiologist Podcast, where we feature leading experts in healthcare. And now here's your host, Dr. Stephen Brownstein. Hello, Dr. Stephen Brownstein here, and I am the host of the Dynamic Radiologist Podcast. Through this platform, I have the great honor to interview top leaders in health and in business to discuss what they're doing to change the world. Some of the amazing guests I've interviewed include Dr. Gref- Jeffrey Cron, CEO of Spinal Kinetics, Smart Injury Doctors, and Smart Injury Lawyers. Dr. Mark- Mike Carberry, CEO of Advanced Medical Integration. Dr. Donald DeFabio and Howard Reese, CEO of the Tell Dentist. This episode is brought to you by Dynamic Medical Imaging. I started this organization 16 years ago and have experienced consistent growth and opportunity. We have the only Fonar upright MRI in central and northern New Jersey. We've had patients consistently coming to our center from over 20 miles away. Over 25% of our patients are either claustrophobic or have failed to have their MRIs completed in a closed unit. They have come here to have their studies performed in a Fonar upright open MRI. We have had over 3,000 doctors from New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania refer their patients to us. What is really telling though, that these same doctors who have referred their family and friends have come here themselves to have their own studies performed. Please check out our testimonial comments and reviews on our website, www.dynamicmedicalimaging.com and see for yourself what your fellow patients have said about their great experience at Dynamic Medical Imaging. Our sec- second sponsor is, bro- is Spinal Kinetics, which I started over uh, 14 years ago. We help medical providers of all specialties evaluate for the presence, location, and severity of spinal ligament injuries. If you do stress radiographs in any format, then you can send them to our trained doctors who use our special technology. Spinal Kinetics developed a technology called CRMA, or Computerized Radiographic Menstruation Analysis, which is an advanced advanced X-ray measurement technology to accurately measure the exact abnormal motion problems that occur with a spinal ligament injury. If you have any questions, go to www.spinalkinetics.com or email support at eSpinalKinetics.com. Well, today I have the great fortune to interview Mr. Peter Festa, a preeminent attorney in the metropolitan area that uh, really cares for his patients. And we're going to go through, you know, if you're in an accident, what you should do and what you shouldn't do, and then uh, delve into some other areas. So good morning, Pete. How are you doing today? Good morning, doctor. We're doing very well. Thank you. And uh, thank you for your time today. And so I'm in a car accident. Uh, What should I do? What should I do? Don't do it. A policeman's knocking on my window and wants to take a a police report. You know, what should I say, not say? uh, And, you know, we'll take it from there. Always with police officers in every situation, you want to be as cooperative as possible. Um, In in the event of of an accident, um, and, and it, it depends obviously on the condition that you're in, um, but if you're able to cooperate and able to provide a statement to the officers and, and your uh, insurance and other uh, motor vehicle information, it's always best to just be open and honest, get that information out to the officer um, and explain as best you can what happened. Um, you know, what, that's always first and foremost. Um, what, what's also first and foremost is your medical condition. And you want to communicate to the officer um, what, you know, if you do have pain, if you do have discomfort, if you are, you know, if you have an obvious injury, some sort of a fracture that you, you, you're aware that it, there's just a lot of pain, you want to try to communicate that as best you can. One of the things that happens a lot and we deal with um, in our in our practice is a lot of times when people are in some sort of a motor vehicle accident or really anything fall down some sort of a traumatic event that results in injury um the the person i don't i don't want to fully use the word shock but they go into a sort of a 
a, a, a phase of, you know, what just happened. And sometimes the last thing that's on their mind is how they feel. Uh, they're worried about their vehicle. They might be worried about their children. They're worried about their insurance. A, a lot of things come into people's minds when they are in one of these accidents or in this sort of a traumatic situation. Um, and, and they don't really feel it. You know, they don't, they're not sure. And sometimes they indicate to an officer, um, you know, I really, I don't feel injured. You know, how, how is the other guy? It, you know, and it depends on the person. Um, and, and there's really no way to give an answer to fix that, um, except to say that the best thing to do is sort of, you know, be as open and honest with the officers as you can and, and, and at least take, a, take an inventory of how you feel and, and what's going on with you at that moment. Um, and, and, and that's really, you know, and then you get your treatment. You know, you're, gonna, you're, you're either going to go into the ambulance or you're going you're gonna to go on your own. Um, but um, I, I, advice that I would give is if you're in a, an accident and it's serious enough and you're not sure if you're injured, um, I would at least allow a request that the ambulance get to the scene so that at least you can be checked out by medical personnel, even beyond the officer. A lot of officers have EMT training uh, these days, but at least allow that to happen. Um, and if you get cleared from the scene, you get cleared from the scene, you can follow up with your, your, your personal doctor, your primary physician, and they can refer you. Uh, but that's, that's, that's about what I would say as, as to that issue. So, okay. So I, I, let's, let's take a scenario that I don't, don't go to your emergency room that I'm feeling okay to, if my car's drive, we'll drive home. Uh, but next day, I, I kind of feel a little bit out of it. You know, I, I kind of start forgetting things. And, and uh, so, and, and also, you know, I, I have to be represented. You know, how, you know, I, I, how do I find the attorney, the attorney for me that will, you know, first send me to the best doctors to take care of me, make me better or try to make me better. And two, properly represent me with the adjudication and with the legal process going forward? Great question. And the first part of your question, if I might add, uh, it is really representative of so, so many of the cases that um, personal injury attorneys and they're in their office deal with on a, on a regular basis, which is the person that really feels okay. You know, they don't want to make a big deal about it. You know, one or two days later, uh, that sort of mid phase that I just spoke about, that sort of shock wears off and, and the pain and the discomfort sort of reveal themselves. Um, you know, at that point, you're obviously going to want to go right to a, to a primary physician, uh, to an orthopedic uh, and, and get medical assistance. And in terms of uh, representation and seeking a lawyer, you know, it seems like we have so many lawyers these days that everyone in the family sort of has a lawyer and knows a lawyer in, in a certain area of law. Um, you know, we, we had a, a, a minor discussion earlier before we, we went on the, uh, the podcast uh, about, uh, you know, about the, uh, the videos and, and doing different advertising and things. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I'm 54. I've been doing this for over 25 years. And I've, ha I've really been lucky enough over the course of my career to um, not only survive, but, but do well and, 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 and run a thriving practice through word of mouth. Um, and, and to me, uh, again, you, you, you'll probably get a different answer from a 30-year-old uh, attorney uh, that's doing personal injury. But for me, if, if you can speak to someone who's had experience with a, with a certain lawyer or a certain firm, you know, and they, they, ha they vouch for that, that personal level of service, uh, the ability to get a good result, the ability to connect with a client, the ability to show empathy for a client, you know, all these things that, um, that we do at Resigliano and Philippe, uh, you know, th those are the types of connections that you're looking to, to, to make with an attorney. And a lot of times that, that just comes from word of mouth. But living in the, the digital world that we do, 
uh, a lot of people want to just go right to that phone and put in a hurt, injured in a car accident in, in Belleville, New Jersey, uh, we'll say for, uh, for an example. Um, and, and, you know, can you still get a good attorney that way? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we, we would be found there. Um, a, a couple of my friends run very, very reputable personal injury firms. They would be found there. Um, so there's, there's really uh, no shortage of information in terms of trying to find a, a, a good personal injury attorney. Um, it's just a matter of, of where you look. And I would, I would say to potential clients, um, use all the digital uh, access that you have, um, but, but don't forget the personal piece. Of, um, of word of mouth and, and people that have had experience with a given lawyer or law firm, because in the end, you know, that's going to be the true test, at least from my perspective. And, um, you know, not every personal injury lawyer is for every single client either. And at, at, at our firm, you know, we recognize that. Now, we're not a huge firm. We have five attorneys that work. We, we just, uh, one of our, um, one of our, junior associates was just uh, just past the bar and is uh, pending her admission. So we'll be five. Um, uh, her name is Alex. She's actually, I'm so impressed with Alex. And even as a, an attorney that's been doing this 25 years, and I've, I've achieved some, some great results for clients, and I've had such personal connections with clients that I I'm constantly getting calls on my cell phone. I was still so impressed with, with Alex, and she's obviously in her mid-20s, um, but she has such, she can develop such an instant rapport with clients that are in this very delicate and fragile situation of having just been in an accident that I really find myself even learning from her. Um, so, you know, you want to you wanna really have that not only to make that personal connection, but to, to find it, you really have to, it, it's got to come to some degree through word of mouth also. Well, a, a referred client or patient is the best kind because they already have trust in you. You know, people deal with people that they like and they trust. So if their family member or friend has gone through the process where your firm and you develop, you know, they're, you know, they have their trust in you. You've shown empathy. You have empathetic listening. You let them tell their story. You know, from the moment they have their first interaction, either on a computer, you know, through the testimonials or a call your office, that uh, you properly train your staff that, you know, the next call is the most important call. That uh, you have to allay some of their fears, let them speak their story. You know, in the end, you want them to be a hero of their own story, uh, you know, in, in partnership with their attorney and your attorney firm, because, you know, it's difficult, although some people can represent themselves and do well. Majority need a guidance. They need the education that uh, they don't have as far as what to expect. Um, and, you know, I know through uh, word of mouth about you and your, your firm that, you put the patient first and foremost, or, or the client, that you, you're looking out for their best interests, that you want them to get better. You know, it's not so much about getting a fair and just award initially, about sending them to the best doctors that can properly diagnose, properly treat, and properly document the, the, your client's injuries. So when they reach maximum medical improvement and you make your demand uh, for a settlement, that you have all the information that you need to get a fair and just award. So along those lines, and, and we'll uh, circle back to uh, how the patients come into your, your practice. Um, when you, when a, a client comes to you and said, doc, I'm still feeling, not feeling well, um, who should I go to? And they ask you for a referral. You know, what parameters do you use as to which doctors you know, say chiropractor, for, for instance, you know, what parameters do you use that you feel comfortable referring your client? You know, now you're, you're 
you know, are preeminent authority. They're trusting your judgment in, in everything now because they've invested their trust in you. Uh, how do you make the call as to, you know, some, you know, some of the chiros or pain management or surgeons that you refer to, you know, what, what's your acid test, so to speak? What, you know, who's, you know, like one, two, and three, as far as, you know, the docs that you refer your clients to. So for, for me and, and for my office um, and um, our, our partners, uh, William Rosigliano and, and Frank Philippe, you know, we, we meet about this issue uh, very regularly in terms of, of what doctors and what practices uh, we like to use. Um, and, and more importantly than which ones we like to use is we, and you, you just mentioned the word acid test. We, we really hash out what we're looking for and why it is that we would choose a particular provider, medical provider. And, and first and foremost, obviously, um, uh, you, you corrected yourself when you said patient and then said client. And the truth is you really, for us, you sort of had it right first. We look at all of our clients first as patients. Where are they going to be treated and, and, and what kind of treatment do they need? And, and that starts with our intake process and our paralegals. Uh, we have an attorney involved in, in I, I, I don't like to say all, because there's always that, that exception, but an attorney will follow up immediately. But we sign the case up with an attorney and staff uh, in most cases. And we want to get a really good handle on, on where, where the pain is, what the injuries are, and then we evaluate that. And the first consideration is where do we get them the best medical treatment to help them get better, period. Um, that's, that's our number one. Um, in, in terms of chiropractors, um, I, I've dealt with a chiropractor in um, Hawthorne, New Jersey, named Dr. Peter Berger. Uh, for many, many years. Um, I can give you the reasons why I like to deal with him. Uh, first and foremost, he helps patients, period. He's, he's, he, he does his job. Um, he knows when uh, an injury might be beyond his expertise and he'll refer, uh, he'll consult us on the referral to make sure that we're, we're on board with, with where they're going. Um, but, but, you know, there's a lot of other issues that go into this, um, you know, and, and this could be the, the subject of, a, of an entire podcast in and of itself. But when you start talking about PIP coverage and, and, and for the listeners that don't know what that means, that's personal injury protection. And that's your insurance paying for your medical treatment initially and then worrying about going after the defendants in a subrogation action. But the billing is so important, and our staff is is uh, trained in how to handle the billing with the uh, medical provider. And when when the, the both of the staffs work well together, it serves the patient, it serves the client better. Um, as as if anybody's been through a personal injury case, at the end of the case, no matter how much you get, there's always going to be some bills that either are copay, deductible, uh, haven't been covered, maybe insurance denied them, but you needed the procedure and we went ahead and did it. Um, it may be going through a fee schedule and there's certain laws and rules that apply to that. So with, a, with, with our staff as trained as it is, when our staff is working with the staff of one of our medical providers and they're on the same page, we get a lot of those hassles out of the way uh, so that a client doesn't have to go into a medical procedure thinking, I, I hope my lawyer can get this covered. You know, it's, it's a lot of the, what a lot of people that don't have experience with personal injury cases don't realize is it's not just the final result. Yes, the final result is very important, um, but it's how you get there. And it's how much of the final settlement or the final verdict the client gets to actually pocket. And, and, and that's why it's so important to be very confident and comfortable with the staff of the medical provider and the billing as well. Um, I, I, I love another uh, chiropractor and um, 
you, you mentioned uh, at one point that, that you had worked at, uh, did a lot of work at Sal Myers. Um, there's a doctor in um, Patterson, and he's now redefined is the name of his practice, Dr. Richard Stabag. Uh, another one, just a consummate professional. They treat the clients like we do. And that's what we're looking for. Um, and, and then, and it, look, it's important. You mentioned it, and we have to mention it because. For us to get the best result for the client, um, the provider has to properly document the injuries. They have to properly document uh, permanency. To some degree, a, a medical provider can also give us some information on, on the complaints that the patient has, on some of the limitations in terms of their life, uh, what, they're, what they're having difficulty doing. because that's part of if, if they can communicate that to the doctor, the doctor then is able to treat them better. And if it's a verbal threshold case um, or there's a permanency issue or maybe it's a Title 59 where there's a certain threshold that needs to be made, you know, these all these documents, these reports, these notes, a lot of times the adjusters want to see the notes. Um, they all matter. And um, if, as long as everybody works and does their job, uh, is th those are the situations where, you know, where we see our best results. And, you know, we have some, I, my, my partner does a tremendous amount. William Rosigliano does a tremendous amount of traumatic brain injury. And so does Frank Filipe, uh, our other partner. Um, they use a Dr. Greenwald uh, in Jersey. He's, he's one of the preeminent TBI um, treating doctors. He's an expert witness. I mean, you know, so we, we really have done a lot of work and research into who we want to use on a given case. And we even narrow that down to the personality of the client, the location of the client, maybe the ethnicity of a client. You have a, maybe a very, um, someone who's Hispanic that doesn't speak English and th they're going to be more comfortable where there's a staff that has this Hispanic, um, uh, staff. Uh, and and we, we, we really try to address the personal issue, the personal detail of each client so that as a patient, they get the same exact treatment. And, and that's, those are some of the things. I, I, I have to say it again, because it's so important to us. Uh, I mean, you know, like any business, you know, we sit, we have meetings about how many cases did we get? Wh where did we get those cases? How did we do this year? You know, the finance, the money. But in, in, at Resigliano and Philippe, clients should know, potential clients should know, that we meet just as regularly on this particular issue and go through searches and we speak to our own clients that have had, had uh, experiences with certain hospitals or uh, pain management centers and so on. Uh, and we really gather as much information and spend a lot of time on that. And that's why a lot of our cases come out favorable. We do a good job, but it's those steps in the preparation that really set us up for that success. Oh, that's great. So if I was to, to ask you, and, and I won't because uh, uh, it's not fair, but you know, take a, a spine injury. And if we exclude the spinal cord, what basically there's two structures that could get injured, the spine or bone and the connective tissue, which is disc connective tissue and ligament connective tissue. And most people feel MRI is the gold standard to diagnose spinal injuries after a motor vehicle accident. Well, the, the problem is there's 220 ligaments in the spine and the discs only make up 20 of those. So basically an MRI only looks at 10% of all the ligaments. And really the only way you can diagnose ligamentous injury, and according to the AMA Guides to Impairment, is through stress radiographs, through inflection extension. And that is good, but the problem is, one, a lot of doctors don't do it, and two, even as a radiologist, if you look for a subtle millimeter differences in movement, you can't see it unless you use a computerized program. To that point, we actually published a, an article where we took 100 cases 
and uh, I sent them to a radiologist to read. The, uh, the computerized radiographic menstruation analysis or intersegmental motion analysis. And there was 27 severe sprain findings, rateable according to the AMA. Radiologist wasn't able to find them, any, zero. I went back, I found maybe 50%. So we were taught first day radiology, you see what you look for, you look for what you know. Problem is there's probably 10 to 15 radiologists in the country who know to look for these things. And unless you use a specialized computer program, you're not gonna find it. But yet spinal ligament injury is a leading cause of chronic spinal pain. So as an attorney, you kind of, you know, fighting with one hand behind your back because the doctors aren't properly diagnosing and you can't treat what you don't diagnose. So that's what we have the company Spinal Kinetics that doctors throughout the country send us radiographs, whether it's disc through uh, USB or whatever, and we do a computerized program. Uh, because the other thing, you know, you know, you send a, a, one of your clients to an IME exam, independent medical examiner, and they say normal range of motion. Well, that's gross range of motion. So when you bend your neck to your chin, it's all the additive things. So you could have one hypermobile or increased mobile in some stationary, but they add up to normal range of motion. So when you uh, cross-examine the, the defense expert and ask him, uh, what was their range of motion? They said it was normal. I said, you said gross or intersegmental? Intersegmental. intersegmental. Well, how'd you do that? Unless they did a CRMA, they can't on physical exam, according to AMA. The only way you can measure intersegmental motion is with stress radiographs, not with your hands. Right. So that, that's a big problem because, you know, patients end up with chronic pain because they have accelerated degeneration, the facet joints because of ligament is damaged. And you can't calculate that into your equation of what they need going further, unless you know, you know, you begin, begin with the end in mind that you have the diagnoses established early on because the, you know, like the Croft guidelines is based on severity of injury. Yeah. So frequent, frequency and duration of care. So one of our, our goals is to make a CRMA integral part in the standard protocol, how patients are, are worked up. Because another problem is you, patient goes to an emergency room. If they think they have a major spinal injury, they'll do uh, CT. They're not even going to do stress radiographs. You know, there's a nexus law, Canadian rules law, where they really are told not to do x-ray. So, unless, so that's 50% of patients go to the emergency room, not primary care or chiropractor for pain management. So already early on, you don't have the proper diagnosis. So then they come, they're still in pain. So they finally see either you and you refer them to one of the great chiropractors that you work with, but there's still a lot of chiros don't do x-ray and not doing x-ray and treat the patient what happens if they now have pain, they do an x-ray, you have a fracture. So, you know, they're protecting their rear end to some degree, but they're making proper diagnosis. So that's one area where the injuries are not being diagnosed. The other is you send, your doc sends a patient to an MRI site that's recumbent. You're going to miss about a third pathology because only if you upright, do it in upright position, sitting position, that's the most stress. It's right. kind of like a toothpaste, the, yeah. uh, a thing of toothpaste that you're squeezing the disc out. So it'd become more, more prominent. And, uh, you know, so, you know, that, that's why we put the, the phone or upright MRI because we want it to be different. And, you know, we're the only one in, in central and Northern Jersey. We have people, you know, before they had one in Lehigh uh, Valley, they used to come from Pennsylvania here. Um, and I don't know how many cases uh, we've seen where negative that we do the upright, there's something there. And also, you know, as I mentioned in the intro, 25% are claustrophobic that they can't have their scans yeah. anywhere else. Uh, so, you know, there's diagnostic, diagnostic value of the phone are as well as patient comfort. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's important that as an attorney, you get your clients properly diagnosed and then properly treated. And, you know, it, it, it serves everybody to get a fair and just award. Um, as, a, as I tell my lawyer friends or doctors, if it's on the film, it'll be in my report. If it's not on the film, it's not going to be. 
because it, it you want to know exactly what's wrong. You don't want make believe stuff because that actually hurts the case. Um, and so that's you know another thing where you know the good thing about CRMA, it, it, you know computer computerized radiograph maturation now it's objective. You know you plot five points, you verify the five points. Computer spits it out with the AMA guides to impairment language. Whereas, you know, MRI, you and I know it, it's subjective. Uh, it's okay. one guy's herniation, it's another guy's protrusion, it's another guy's bulge. Um, and, you know, up until 2004, there was no standardized nomenclature in the lumbar spine for what's a bulge, what's a protrusion, what's an extrusion, what's a sequestration. And to this day, there still isn't one in the, for the cervical spine. So there's a lot of intra and inter observer variation when it comes to MRI. Um, and, you know, you want to try to be as objective as possible as a doctor, find out what's wrong as an attorney to properly represent the client. And, you know, if you have a rateable finding on CRMA, it carries a whole body impairment twice that, uh, you know, more than two herniations. Yeah. So um, we do a lot of work in, in New York and, and some in Jersey, but we're in all the other 48 other states. Uh, Dr. Kronk, who's my CEO. Uh, he's a chiro, but also has a JD degree. So we do CME, CLE credit courses. Um, he's done thousands. So it, it's you know, our, our job, like you, is to educate. You know, you educate your client. We educate the referring doctors and their attorneys because only through education can we fully diagnose, properly treat. And the whole goal is to have you know better treatments, better outcomes, and. and improved uh, activity of daily living and being more efficient in the workforce uh, because you and I know that, you know, spinal pain is the leading cause of, of economic burden to the muscle, you know, to the, the uh, economy, as well as, you know, when your back hurts, you can't lift up your kid. You can't, you, you just, you know, we, we both have had pain, you know, you know yeah. I don't, nobody goes through life without having some kind of spinal pain. And, it, you know, we want to try to get out of it as quick as possible. But, um, you know, it, it's just important that we do the best job for our patient slash client and through education. So let's, let's circle back. So I call up your office. Uh, you know, I've just been in a car accident. You know, how do you train your staff to be receptive, to have empathetic listening, to actually have the patient, you know, tell their story and help kind of lower down, if you will, their, their fear factor, if you will? It's a great question. And it really comes from, um, you know, when we, when we interview staff, and I, I've interviewed um, just in this past year, uh, three, I've, I've interviewed multiple people, but I've interviewed three of the, the people that we've uh, ultimately hired. And, uh, you know, I did that obviously in consultation and after meetings with, uh, with our partners. Obviously we're, we're looking for experience in this field. Um, but, but for me, once I'm satisfied that there's at least a base level of experience in the field, I know that we can train them our way anyway, in terms of the legal issues and how to put a package together and how to get the meds. But I really look for personality. I look for a consistency of uh, personality. Some people are morning people and their demeanor on the phone is great in the morning. And after, you know, after a couple of phone calls that uh, don't go well and doctors don't have what they need right away and the lawyer's screaming at them and they, they have a tough lunch and, you know, in the afternoon, their personality is, is a little different, you know? So uh, it's, it's not the longest work day, but it's uh, a lot can happen in a work day. So I look, I look for that consistency of personality and I, I, I look for people who, um, and I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna reuse this word and it's not gonna sound good, but I look for people that are people, people. <laughs> Doesn't sound right, but there's really no other way to say it. And, um, we, we certainly have have them. Uh, I'll be honest. We we have another uh, individual that works with us. Very very quiet, very shy. I wouldn't call them a people person. Um, 
they know how to handle themselves on the phone, but you know their job is just to get reports and deal with the offices, uh, get get meds, and and um, they they do a great job with that. Um, but the people that we have on the front lines that are that are taking the calls are just very well trained in terms of 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 how to make the person feel as important as they really are. And that's what I try to impress on, on our staff. We all work for our clients. You know, sometimes our staff, they, they worry about what, what I and, and our other partners think. How, are, how do we think they're doing? In the end, it's how do the clients think that they're doing? Because that's how we eat. <laughs> that's that's what we who we all work for. Even those who write the checks for the stat, you know. So we really try to impress that dynamic. Uh, it uh, you could see that in, during an interview, and especially during a second interview, some people take to it, some people don't. Um, so we try to select people that work for us that have that component. Um, they make them feel as important as they are, and th they're important to themselves. It's important to help them at this very difficult time where, you know, one of the first things that happens, and I, I, I'll never forget this. Um, I'll, I'll relay this one uh, quick example. It, it, was a, it, was, it was a client whose family I had represented on multiple levels. Um, we did a, a few civil cases. We did a couple of closings. Um, and, and one of their family members was in a really serious accident. And they called me. I remember I was in my office at 4.30. Um, you know, Joe was in an accident. And he's, he's in the trauma uh, room at uh, St. Joe's. And I, I was literally five minutes away. And I went right over there. And I, I, I said, hello. I, I, I didn't go there necessarily with an intake. <laughs> you know, I went there because these people have been good to me for all these years and were important to me, and I went there. Um, and the one thing that he kept saying is, do, do I have enough insurance? He, he remembered when he was buying his insurance and he was haggling over the price of his PIP or how much he would get and what it would cost. And he goes, I have three kids. How long am I going to be in this bed? And how am I going to get my kids fed and take care of my wife? That's all he wanted to know from me. And that stuck with me. That happened in, I would say, probably about 2013 or 2014. And when, when obviously it had an impact on me, I, I, it's, at the, you know, it's at the tip of my, my tongue. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, and I, I, I explained that scenario to, to our potential staff. And I, I can say that at this point, uh, while there's always room for improvement, uh, we really do achieve that client-centric approach. Um, and um, it, it's, it's really our number one goal. I mean, we do our absolute best for people. And we, we do our best to keep them updated. Um, the other key thing, too, is to, you know, return calls. I mean, sometimes the client is calling with something that they might have a question about. You know the answer. You know that there's no issue with it. But they don't. And you might have a paralegal explain it. Sometimes they just want to talk to an attorney. And you have to get on the phone. I call us. We're a cell phone firm. <laughs> We, our clients, for the most part, have our cell phones. I mean, I honestly, I, I think now that we're, we're dealing with COVID, I think all lawyers are cell phone firms now, just uh, out of necessity. But I mean, my, my, my phone is just basically like a Rolodex of clients and former clients. And um, I, I just, I, I find that it, it helps, it helps to get referrals because People know that I can get this attorney on the phone at four o'clock on a Saturday just to say hello, that they may have an issue. We'd love to meet with you. Um, uh, or on, they might have a question about their case on a four o'clock on a Saturday. 
And you're either going to be that attorney or you're not, you know, and um, uh, we, we, we've always tried to be that attorney. Are we perfect? No, um, you know, but it's, it's our goal and, and we do our absolute best with it. That's great. So uh, Dan Sullivan, the coaches of entrepreneurs, came up with the term unique ability. And we all have a unique ability, our sweet spot that one, we like doing it and we're proficient in it. Everything else that's not our unique ability either you should give it to somebody else the the who Delegate. the other who's that's your your paralegals or and and you know not do it at all so you want to find people that you their unique ability is being people people that they right. are have empathetic listening that they actually listen to the client instead of just go through the motion that they make your client feel important, uh, allay some of their fears, educate them, you know, initially to, you know, what to expect. And, you know, that, that's, you know, priceless that, that, well, it's not priceless. If you do that well, you won't have to worry about, you know, keeping the lights on because if you have help enough people get the, the satisfaction of feeling better and getting fear adjustment, if you're in, in just a ward, you won't have any problems getting other clients because word gets around. And as long as you treat them as, as, you know, I hate using family, but really they become your family. And, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you keep a uh, Rolodex or electronic or whatever that, you know, I'm sure clients want to know what happens after, you know, after we're done in court where they send us a check you know, do you go off into the sunset and we never talk again? Or, you know, do we stay in communication? And if so, you know, how? And, and uh, so I, I know you get a lot of referrals. So obviously you have a, some kind of referral program. You don't leave it to happenstance that uh, you do follow up as part of your referral program and also part of being a mensch in the Yiddish you know, you, you care about, yeah, you sure. care about your, your, your people, your, you know, they're, they're your people now, you know, right. you, you, you invested your time and money and they invested their, their trust into you. So it's a two way street that only gets stronger over time. And it's a street that can be traveled more than once. You know, even if, you know, if you're in an accident or a friend or family's in an accident or relatives in an accident that, you know, you don't have to build another road, you know, come, you know, I have this great relationship with Pete and, and, you know, the firm that they did good by me. They listened to me. They made me feel as a hero, my own case that, you know, instead of being, they helped me when everybody tried to minimize, minimize my condition. You know, my friend, "Ah, there's nothing wrong with me. Uh, My, my parents, "Ah, you're all all in your mind, insurance company. Well, nothing happened to the car. So, you know, you know, you know, you, you're, you know, you make believing, what, you know, you don't really have the injuries. So how do you deal with, you know, everybody trying to knock them, your clients down a peg and how do you build them back up so they become their hero? You know, it, it's, um, it's difficult. It's, um, you know, because a lot of clients come to us in a very, very fragile state. They really do. It, 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 in some cases, it's the worst situation they've been in in their lives. I mean, some of our cases if you do any research you know on our firm we've handled some just catastrophic cases um i i I think that it really goes there's really no magic trick to it except time and attention in my opinion it it really becomes almost a almost a math equation if you give people time and attention um and you believe in them and and they, if they trust you, they open up. And when they open up, that's what gives you your best chance to get someone the best result is when they fully trust you. And then, you know, all of the weaknesses, you know, all of the strengths, um, you know, it's like any relationship, really. If you really analyze it, it's like any relationship, good friends, uh, a, a coach and a player, uh, an attorney and a client, uh, all the way to a, a marriage. If if it's open, if there's attention, if there's understanding, um, 
you know, look, in, in every relationship, there's going to be disagreement. Sometimes the client is, you know, a little unreasonable in what they, they think that they can get. And there might be a legal reason why they can't get more. Um, there might be a, 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 a proof reason why they can't get more. And we have to be able to deliver them that news. Um, you know, the, the, the adjuster offered us X. The judge is saying that they're going to try to help us get more. But we have to have an understanding that, you know, you're on board with X. And if we have that connection and they trust us and we go get them more, that's got to be, you know, what happens. Um, so that's really where it is. It's a tension. Uh, and it's just it's showing that that empathy. Um, I, what I find is. We have a very energetic firm. Um, we have some younger lawyers, and uh, uh, Bill Rosigliano and I are the oldest lawyers. Uh, we are 54. Uh, we're, we're a very that's, energetic. That's young. That's 54. young. 54 is young. Well, when you have a 25 year old attorney and a couple in their 30s, we're 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 the oldest, is is what I'll say. So. Uh, but when you have that energy and you, you, you know what you're talking about and you give the client the uh, benefit of time and listening and explaining, a lot of it begins to take care of itself. If you establish the relationship that way, the client knows how important they are. And I, I, I love how you use that term, how they, how, how, how they become their own hero. Um, a lot of our clients, I think, naturally begin to feel that way um, pretty early on. I won't say when we first meet necessarily, but pretty early on in the process, they get an idea that we're, we'll, we'll make a phone call and say to a medical provider, listen, you guys need to send them for pain management. You need to get this done. You're not getting it done. No problem. Our paralegal takes over and gets it done. Does it happen often? No. But does it happen? Now, with COVID, as you can imagine, I mean, there are a lot of offices. Some offices don't even exist anymore, quite frankly. So we've had a lot of those issues, but they're very good medical offices, and, and we know the struggles they're having. We've had some struggles, too. We've overcome them, um, and we, we work together to get these things done. And when clients see that, they, they get that feeling of, I, I can be myself. I'm going to be okay because they have my back. And, and that's what I see generated um, in, in, in our office. And quite honestly, it's exciting to be a part of that. I enjoy that. I personally, I, I was on a, a couple of podcasts and they asked me about the biggest case I've ever settled. And then they asked me about, because I, I do criminal law also, and, you know, the most the biggest like murder case that I've ever won. Um, and th there are interesting questions and I certainly have one of each, but it was really the reward of that. I was able to cross the finish line with this client in this horrendous situation in both instances. And it came out favorable to them. And there's, there's when people, I mean, they, they call me on Christmas day. People like that call me on Christmas Day, and they never miss. And I think about them, too, all the time. Uh, that's great. It that's really awesome. is the reward of it that uh, is exciting for us. You mentioned the high energy, and I could tell you that through just emails from Mar Marissa, oh, yeah. she has high energy on her emails. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, um, she, she's a, a, a great person, and, and thank her for me for setting this up. Uh, Certainly. And I, I, if I can interrupt one second, I'm taking full credit. And I hope that Mr. Rosigliano sees this. I'm taking full credit for her hire. Okay, great. He found her, but I interviewed her. No, she, she is excellent. Tremendous. Well, we, one day soon we can meet in person. But you mentioned you know, the clients as far as, you know, the importance of client patient being compliant with their medical care, even in the presence of COVID and all. It's it's hassles, if for lack of a better term. So how do you relay 
the importance of them showing up for their treatment, showing up if they have to have an IME uh, exam. So, yeah, I have to give, uh, I just took some credit, most of which probably is deserved by me in terms of the hiring of uh, Marissa. All of the credit, all of the credit in this area goes to our founding partner, William Rosigliano. Okay. Um, he he found founded this law firm. Uh, he and I worked together before he founded the law firm that we now joined um, back in Patterson. So I have a long history with him. I, I went to law school with him. His leadership in this time, which at 54 years old, uh, I, I, I know that you've never seen anything like this in terms of, of, of COVID. His leadership through this process has been unbelievable. Um, and quite honestly, we all, including me, really look to him as our leader. Um, I know that some people in the office, I certainly look to the other partner, Frank, and, and some even look to me as a managing attorney. Um, I have a lot of experience. We look to him and he set the stage immediately when, when we closed the office initially back in March of 2020. And we've had attorney meetings, uh, we've had staff meetings on this particular issue of getting clients where they need to be, uh, hiring car services to get them there. Um, we, we use a company called Watchdog that uh, in, for, for New York, when there's an IME, we, we, have, uh, we, we, we pay that company to show up with our clients. Um, we, we've shown up with, with clients at different uh, meetings. I had a case, I have a case in Jersey with someone who's uh, a little older and was really in a very bad accident. Unfortunately, uh, it's a gentleman I've known forever, and uh, I, I, I've I've gone to like three of the appointments with him just to to be there. And I, I had the time. I, I just like to do that sort of thing. But William Rosigliano really set the tone for that, and um, and I would also credit our our really our primary paralegal, uh, Elizabeth, who's just done a tremendous job with that. Um, and that's, that's, we, we just do what needs to be done. And, and I, it's difficult. I mean, I'm, I'm still carrying a full caseload, you know, I'm still handling some municipal and some criminal matters. I still have constant calls from client, you know, but we, we really have done our best to go above and beyond for the clients at this time. And, um, and convince clients that, you know, medical providers are, are providing a safe environment for them uh, and that it is important from a health perspective for them to continue their treatment. But that's, that's where that, that tone was set. And um, it, it's, it's, it's worked out so far. Thank God. That's great. So yeah, I probably should have led with this question in the beginning, but how did a, how did a kid from Patterson end up? Uh, being an attorney with one of the most preeminent law firms in the metropolitan area? Because the lawyer from Patterson, the kid from Patterson, was lucky enough to go to law school with him. And, and, it, and, and there's some truth to that. I, 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 I would explain it this way. He, he might have a different take. Um, so w we graduated law school, and... Uh, I, I work, went to work for a, um, really a personal injury. I went to work for Fusco and Macaluso. It's a personal injury firm and criminal at the time. Uh, and I did both there. And I worked there for about 18 months and it became apparent. I, I was just bringing work in and I, I had to open up. Um, Bill uh, was working uh, for a defense firm and um, that didn't work out. And, and Bill started his own practice and he and I were friendly. And uh, I, I had a lot of civil cases, quite frankly, and I was doing criminal and municipal as well. And I knew I needed some help. And I, I easily could have hired someone, but I was smart enough to call on Bill, um, who was a little reluctant and said he wasn't really at that stage looking to work for someone. And I said to him, well, I'm not looking for someone to work for me either. I said, I, why don't we just, you know, we'll be partners and you do the civil and I'll do the criminal and the municipal and, and we'll give this thing a go. And we started our office in Patterson, New Jersey, not far from where I grew up. And uh, we were together for uh, several years 
and we did very, very well together. And and where it broke off, it was a very amicable situation. Bill Bill's dream always was to be a New York lawyer, and I was a Jersey guy. Um, so yeah. we worked it out where he went to New York and I stayed in Jersey. And over the years, we've done a lot of work together. I mean, it was it wasn't like we were really separate. Uh, and then back in October of 2019. He, uh, we were all going to go out to dinner and he called me in early and he said, listen, I, I really think we have so much mutual business and we work so well together. And what do you want to do? You know, do you want to? And, uh, you know, we, we do we do have a location in West New York that's still under construction. And the idea was that I would join the firm and be the managing attorney of, of the, the entire New Jersey practice out of that location. And we're, we're close to our, our full construction there. But, um, you know, I, 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 I had a great partner back in the day. I have even better partner and partners now. Um, and all the attorneys that, I, that work with us, I look at as our partners, um, so to speak. We all work well together. And uh, that's how I got involved with Resigliano and Philippe. It was a, certainly a big opportunity for me. Uh, I took it. And even under COVID, it's gone very well. No, so they, they have a very great reputation, and uh, you're going to be a, you are a force multiplier. That you know, wherever they had has got, gotten significantly better. Um, Thank you. And so right now, um, if I'm injured and I want you to represent me in New Jersey, uh, how how does that happen? Do you have an office in New Jersey or? Oh, yes. Temporarily, we're in Wayne, New Jersey right now. We're at 500 Valley Road. Um, I have a, uh, a small office there. Um, and, um, and, and, and quite frankly, uh, I travel. One of the projects we're working on also is uh, Law Mobile. And we're going to, we have a completely retrofitted uh, mobile office vehicle. Uh, Full service office, bathroom, Wi-Fi, computers, printers, everything. Uh, that should be ready by uh, by June, and we'll be able to come to people in New York or New Jersey, right to their doorstep, uh, uh, fully uh, wheelchair or disability uh, accessible, and you know we're that sort of firm. So we we would come to you too. No, that, that'd be great. And that gives me an idea for a podcast. So we're going to get your other partners on when you're about to release this and just uh, blow it up because I, I think it, it's, it's, it's one of those eureka moments that, you know, why didn't somebody else think of it? But I think that, I think that's great um, because, you know, it, it, it's amazing. You know, COVID has been a pain in the ass for so many people, but it's opened up so many opportunities because it forced people to think outside the box to be more resourceful um, and just come up with new ideas that if things were status quo, um, you wouldn't have thought of it. You would have doing the same thing you've been doing for 25 years. You know, you go to the patient, the patient comes to you and you know, the whole bit, but it, it's, uh, that's a great idea. No, really, really yep. great. Um, we're excited about it. Yeah, so um, try and think what else. We've covered a lot. And again, I thank you for your time. It's been My a pleasure. pleasure. I know what. I, I've done probably 100 depositions, you know, either in court or in my office here. And I have to tell you, most of the plaintiff attorneys that come in ill prepared and they look like the, uh, uh, you know, a dog that's been out in the rain. You know, they've been beaten down so much by the insurance companies that uh, they're going through the motions. And I have to say that you're one of the few attorneys that I've talked to, interviewed now, that still have that spark, that you know, you're still looking to, to best represent the next client and a client after that, a client after that, that you, know, you view the insurance company, not necessarily evil because you need, the, you need them in order to settle the case, but you don't let them beat you down. You know, you know, the best way to beat them is through documentation that, you know, it's not you saying it or your client saying it. It's in, it's in the paper. 
it's in the documentation of you know the doctor's notes documentation of the test results document documentation of the treatment and the patient you know being forthright with honesty you know here's what my activity daily living looked like before when i, when I was first injured here is now here's a residual you know i i can't do this can't can't golf whatever and you know that's the truth and i love playing golf um so you know i had to commend you with your your vigor even at 54 quote unquote uh, mm -hmm. and it, it's been a true pleasure uh meeting you this way hopefully soon we can meet in person and i'd love to meet your your partners and, and have further discussions because i think there, there's a, a wonderful relationship that can be built in trying to do what's best for the patient client and again thank marissa and tell her, you know, thank you from, from me for setting this up and uh, tell Bill that he made a wise decision um, and I'll vouch for you. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay well. And again, thank you, sir. My pleasure to do the same. Thanks for tuning in to the Dynamic Radiologist podcast. Make sure to click subscribe to get updates on our latest episodes.